Worldwide Podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, positive power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. Yeah, yeah, what's going on, family? Welcome, welcome to Late Night, Late Night Radio, Late Night with Jerry was live worldwide and the beautiful Kelly Holland out of Charm City. Hope you guys having a great, great week. I guess we can say happy Friday. It's like two hours away. That's right. Welcome to the 10 o'clock late night show. And we're going to have a great time, y'all. We got a very, very special guest here. I actually had an opportunity to meet her on a, a remote television recording with Paula G, the voice. It's right on my journey. A lot of you guys are big fans of my journey. Such big fans of my journey that we got picked up in New York and now airing on Bronx Net in, in, in the Bronx. That's right. Great opportunity, and we just love being on that platform. And shout out to the to our Bronx Net TV crew programmers. Also, y'all, I know you guys are still um, all in the news right now. We're going to bring Kelly out real soon as soon as she uh, log on. Um, the news has really been getting crazy out there, y'all. We still we still got issues with you know policing and and um, all kinds of political stuff. And now everybody's up in rules about the mandates. That's right. Mandates. That's right. I think our military and our government employees, civil employees are required to get the vaccine. And that's pretty deep. So, with all that said, um, I know it's a lot of podcasts going on about that. And um, Clubhouse is talking a lot about it. You got the vax, the unvax, you know, but the bottom line is, y'all, <laughs> I mean, we're going to be in this thing for a while the way it's going. It's, it's not going to go away. But I know here in Maryland, um, we got a report in Frederick, Maryland, that the deaths are up in Frederick, Maryland. Yeah. Right. I know. Look at Frederick, Maryland. It's, it's really, really big. It's, it's a big, big county here in Maryland. And he said the deaths are up, the hospitals. And then uh, we just had a report from from um, health chat with Coach Gene that um, a lot of the, the um, hospital um, personnel are walking off the job. They they were to quit and to be fired. So now you got issues with, with support. And we already had a problem with a shortage of, uh, of nurses. Now it's going to be even worse. And then it's probably our good nurses is walking out the door. Because you know, like any job, you're going to have some good employees and some bad employees, right? And the good employees do outshine the bad employees. The ones that's always snacking, <laughs> those are probably the bad employees. But the ones that's just taking on everything they can, no time for breaks. But anyway, just I'm just kidding about that. But, you know, it, it is a it is going to be a problem. It's going to be a domino effect. And we're already having a shortage of, of goods coming into the country. The prices are going up. They never went down <laughs> when everything went back to normal, you know, with the shipping. Now we're hearing more ships are stuck out there and trucks are just waiting for them to, to arrive. So it's been it's pretty deep what's going on out there, y'all, and um, it, 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 major concern. But the only thing we could do right now is just put it in the hands of the Lord. So that means we got to get our prayers up. That's right. I know a lot of you guys out there asking for cars and TVs and new homes and stuff, but we got a serious situation going on right now. <laughs> you may not get a chance to drive that new car the rate we're going. But we just got to give it to the Lord. Now, we're still waiting on Miss Kelly. Uh, we chatted with her shortly, and she uh, she said she was here. But she was on her way. But she's a little late. So we'll check on her. But meanwhile, let's go ahead and listen to um, the music of our guests. Um, we have Miss Lady J. She called herself officially Lady J. She's here with us tonight. Uh, we're going to have a great time talking to her. She's going to be telling us about some of her experiences in ministry, testimony, and the music. She's, she's, she's all out there. She knows what's going on. So as soon as we get Miss Kelly on the show, on the show, we'll be able to uh, get this interview going. But meanwhile, we're going to listen to a little bit of um, what we call Burton's Down by Lady J. Hold tight. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Yeah. 
Let, I'm just going to let her guess out. What's going on, Lady J? How you doing? Welcome to Late Night with Jervis Live Worldwide. How you doing? I'm doing just fine, Mr. Batman Jerry Royce. So <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And glad to have you. And, you know, of course, you know, you and I met um, doing the recording and everything. So I'm going to pretend I don't know you. So the guests okay. can get a chance to get to know you. You know, sometimes you know somebody so well, you don't ask the real questions that people need to okay. know. All right. Well, my first question is, who is Lady J? Who is she? Well, officially, Lady J is, uh, and first, let me say, the reason why I go by officially is because there are a lot of Lady J's out there. And when we Googled, there's some Lady J's out there that are like rump shakers. And I didn't <laughs> want to be confused. <laughs> One of them looked a little bit like me. And I was like, oh, no, we got to put something in front of this. So uh, I am a gospel recording artist. I write, sing, and produce my own music. And uh, I'm unapologetic with the lyrics that the Holy Spirit has given me. Amen, amen. That, that's a deep piece right there. I'm burdens down. A deep piece. Yeah. Yes, yes. A lot, a lot of what I sing about and uh, what the Holy Spirit gives me is based on years of ministry and counseling, as as well as my own life. And um, I like to, I like to indulge in the topics that are behind the mask. Cause you know, you come to church, everything is all happy. Praise the Lord. Praise oh, the Lord. Man. How are you? Hi, and highly favored. But on the inside, a lot of people are suffering. Yeah, they are. And there are some real situations that are going on in people's homes that we may never know about, but God knows about them. And I wanted to produce some music that would give them a way out. That's right. And I always believe that, um, that music videos are, you know, help, you know, Give like the you know if it's a powerful message, it's more impactful, you know, because the person is sitting there, you know, you have the undivided attention. They just looking at it, and then they can really feel the, the pulsating of the music, the beats, and at the same time, they can kind of capture the lyrics and understand where it's coming from by the by the cinema. And I, I saw another one of your videos. I think you released that a lot earlier, and uh, it looked like you was riding in a limousine, and it looked like it was something going on with domestic abuse. You had like a black eye, so you have a lot of messages. So tell us, you know, is that important to you that that a powerful message have to be um, displayed in your videos? Yeah, I'm a very visual person, and when we uh, approach the videos, my team and I, we're trying to get a movie in those three to six minutes um, a, a story that's told beginning to end. So if you saw Love Myself, um, the woman that I portrayed as a victim of domestic violence, um, you know, she she got to boil in that water for the grits. Mm. So, you know, we, we got some real 
real uh, life solutions and, 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 and interest in those videos. Um, and we just wanted to pick them um, properly. You know, we don't, I, I'm not, some people are more like um, cartoony in yeah. their videos. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's room for that. But I think when you deal with the seriousness of a uh, issue like domestic violence, um, you you really wanted to pick that. And I, and I think some Christians uh, were put off by that video because they thought it was far too violent. Mm. Um, they they were very uncomfortable with what we produced. But, you know, I go at the end, I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. So I'm more mostly concerned with the vision and how God gives it to me. And because at the end of the day, you know, I don't I don't really seek to please people. Mm -hmm. I'm glad people get a lot out of my music. But I want to please God in what I'm doing. Because if we call ourselves doing gospel and God's not pleased with how we act in front of the camera, behind the camera, before the interview, after the interview, then, then what are we really doing? That's right. Because he'll call you out. <laughs> he gave you a mission, you know. Won't he do it? Yeah. He will cover you. He will let the devil just pull, him, pull yeah. it off, pull the cover off. Yeah, bubble gum in his. Yeah, you putting bubble gum on his message. He, he wants that thing to have smoke coming out of it. Fire. You know? <laughs> right, right, people remember right, it right. And, and talk about it like like you said a lot of the christians weren't happy about it. so obviously it must have been impactful it must have touched the bone <laughs> touched a funny bone or something you know yeah because i have had people okay like on our on the first album um tales of a congregation we uh i produced a song called church games mm. and in church games people um we were talking about um the uh Pimping preacher, mm. you know, pimping in the pulpit. Um, another thing that came out is the peak and deacon. Um, all those things. And, and people were like, you know, I I don't know. This is not gospel. This is not. <laughs> oh, man. They know what it but, is. <laughs> but, but it dealt with the church hurts. And church hurt is real. Yes. So, uh, mm. you know. I like that. It's funny. Um, it sounded like you said church gangs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the name of the name of the song is Church Games. Oh, and the, and I was thinking G-A, I was thinking G A N G. Oh no, G A M E, <laughs> the would, game of church. <laughs> yeah, they would they would have got you if you would have put um, gang on it. Oh no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, you do have them though. Crazy. You do have them in there though. It, it does happen. Sometimes yeah. you walk in churches and you feel like the ushers are bouncers. You do feel like you're walking into a gang in some in some services. Yeah, they call you in the office. <laughs> like yeah, the yes. And it needs to be all these people. And you're like, why do we need all these people in this meeting? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you do feel like you're being kind of ganger. Because I remember I was I was really involved with um, a, a conference. Uh, it was a pretty big conference in Baltimore, Washington. Everything big in the Baltimore, Washington, the DMV. And, um, you know, because a lot of people come from, you know, strong political position, positions of power, you know, a lot of government subcontracted stuff. So people, you know, they, they feel like it's theirs. You know, they didn't start their church. They weren't even a founder or nothing. They weren't even nowhere around yeah. 20 years ago or 30 or 50. But they come in there and they, uh, you know, they bully people up, you know, bully the yeah. pastor. Can't really deal with the first lady all the time. <laughs> but if she's not there, they're going to take advantage of it. <laughs> they find a way to deal with the first lady. Yeah, um, yeah it's true too. Yeah. You know, right? There's a lot of stories out there, right? And you know, it's funny right. because, you know, when they did that movie Greenleaf, mm -hmm. you know, at first I said, wow, this is going to be pretty, this is going to be putting a lot of uh, uh, dirt out there. <laughs> you know, the stuff mm -hmm. people didn't know because, you know, the, the black church is one of the most powerful institutions for African Americans, people of color. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. they did that, it's like, wow, they're going to show some stuff. You know, and it's happening almost pretty much everywhere. You know, the narcissists, you know, exist everywhere. And uh, they yeah. had a bunch of them on that show. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now you're the first lady. So tell us a little bit about your experience. You know, I mean, I know, you, you know, you want to share the good stuff. But, you know, what you see as the first lady that you can share with us that, you know, kind of disturbing to you sometimes. Well, you know, I, I like to be transparent. And I think that's one of the things that our congregants love about our church is my husband and I are very transparent. Um, so I don't, I don't seek to like, I, I will tell the good, bad and the ugly. But the thing that's, that's most, um, 
that I, the thing about being a first lady is this one Uh-oh. nobody says well at least i didn't say i want to be a first lady mm, right. <laughs> you know it's your husband that's called and then you get that position based on his calling so obviously the lord says okay well you must be able to handle it but mm. you're in such a fishbowl and there's so uh, many unspoken rules oh, that wow. surround your conduct as a first lady. And Brother Royce, I don't subscribe to any of those. <laughs> so I wrote about <laughs> I wrote about it in a song, not in my home church. I mean, like if we go out someplace, of course I'm not gonna wear pants or slacks to a Kojic, you know, conference or something. Mm. But uh, I'm probably not gonna wear the biggest hat and the most beaded dress either. Mm-hmm. So, little more you know different but i wrote a song called out of the box Mm. that was an album also on the um tales of a congregation and i talk about that you know like they'll say the the verse is uh first lady like first lady where's your church had your fancy dress expensive (laughs) bag why won't you sit in our front row Mm. then i say I'm not really about that at Real Gospel. That's my church. Find me in the back. I'm not about the show. I'm all about Christ. Mm. So, you know, that's where I come from. And he yeah. leads me out of the box. Mm. So uh, that's just. Yeah, just, man. It's I'm like just politics. Uh, like politics. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, I've been. My wife and I have been members, uh, strong members, at least two churches and heavily attended you know, put it all together for, but you know, you got a chance mm-hmm. to get to know the past of the families, the other families, hang out with some families. And I'm telling you, um, four different stories <laughs> with the first lady. <laughs> Interesting. Make a marvelous movie. If anybody ever decide to do one, <laughs> that'd be deep. Well, you should, you should, I don't know if you saw it, but my uh, video for backslider, Jesus loves the backslider is green leaf. In, in in a few minutes because Ooh. it's about it's a story about a um, infidelity in the church if you watch the video i don't want to give it away and spoil it but uh it got a lot of uh top officials in that video mm. with regards to positions that they hold in the church so um you know you just have, i invite the listeners to check it out uh backslider and, and again, that was another video. Yeah, yes, yeah, send me that one. Yeah, yeah, send me that one. You know, we air stuff on TV now. People want to see stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that was an affair between two people in the church. Hmm. But the but the message of all my songs, you know, and 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 the lyrics can get messy, but so does life. So does life. They, they send you to the corner. They put you in the huh? corner. They put you in the corner at the church. Not, but not my church. My church. I love my church because you know what? I, I'm really blessed. Um, if we have a lot, if we have messy people, they have not acted messy in the church. If <laughs> 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 we have, and if and if we have some things that that don't like or love love me and my husband, they haven't let us know yet. So if you're listening. Just keep doing what you're doing. I don't. I don't want to know. I don't want to know if you feel any different. <laughs> oh man, oh man. So, ladies, where? So, where are you uh, based right now? Um, are you in the south or the north? No, um, I'm east coast. East coast. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, right. Yeah, Cleveland. 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 Ohio. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's like um, for for Baltimore. That's, that's like uh, um, I guess the yeah, yin and a yang. I guess you could say because um, remember. Mm-hmm. We, your football team moved here to Baltimore after we had Owls moved to Annapolis, Indianapolis. That's a very sore spot for us. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and then, of course, once you guys got there, you started winning all these games. I know. It's like no, it's so well. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. NFL's been interesting. Interesting. And um, also, I peach your bio. And um, now, does this say that you, you were you, you a native of the Philippine Islands? I am. Is that I due to milita- was that military or family? You know, they were born uh, both, both, oh. both. Um, if my relatives in the PI Philippine Islands are listening, Maganda Umaga. My yeah. mother is Filipino. My father was a serviceman, oh. uh, Air Force. Mm-hmm. So they met, fell in love, and ta-da! Instantly, I'm international. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> automatically. 
Yeah, I, I find uh, um, I was I was just talking to somebody about the Philippines too about the Philippines. I have a couple friends, um, you know, from work, and I remember a young lady. I was, I was her manager. I remember we had a get together and you know some music. Man, she was turning up them line dances. Man, I was like, dang, I can't even pick up not one. She she do them all, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody said, "Go, Rose, go, Rose." I mean, she was turning it <laughs> up, and she hasn't been. She hasn't lived here that long, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I think it was like three years. I was like, "Well, maybe she learned them all in three years." Maybe so. Yeah, but maybe. another friend of mine, um, he he picked up um, mo- most of his friends are African American, mm-hmm. and um, but he gets along with everybody perfectly. Um, mom has something to do with the U.S. Um, Embassy or some sort. So he grew up around Americans for a long time before they moved to DC. Very intelligent guy. And uh, but he he just has so much soul. So uh, tell us a little bit about the people, you know, in the, on the Philippine Islands. Tell us about them. Well, um, you know, family is family. Um uh the Philippines is a very beautiful place. It's um made up of uh a number of islands. I was born on the Luzon Island, which is the largest island mm-hmm. in a small town outside of Manila. Manila okay. is their Very capital. With that. Yes. Yeah. So I've I've been back to visit. Um, I didn't go back when our last president was in office. Mm-hmm. In fact, I wasn't even going to Canada when he was in office because <laughs> I was like, I might not get back. I might not get back. <laughs> yeah. But that's a long flight uh, to the Philippines too. That's a very long right. flight. Yeah, man, fact, my, my my current boss, well, former boss, he just just left. He he um worked there for many many years. He was a director over there for a very hmm. long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah he he very he, yeah he loved it. I don't know how they got him. To, I'm surprised he didn't resign and took another job there. <laughs> you know, because I heard <laughs> great things about. Yeah. But you guys experienced a lot of um um horrific storms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they've had some some challenges. Yeah, like tsunamis uh, and stuff like that. It was the first time I ever heard of one. I think it attacked the Philippine Islands, right? The tsunamis. I don't know, brother or I don't, I don't know if we had a tsunami. You don't I don't remember we have that. a rainy season. Oh, I, I thought, that I thought a... yeah, I thought a few years ago y'all got hit by a tsunami. I had to look that if, up. If it were, it didn't, it didn't hit my family. We were okay. more inland. Okay, maybe yeah. maybe it was a movie I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> so and they filmed it on the it Philippine was, Islands. It was Asian people in it. You was like, you know yeah. what? Lady <laughs> Jane from the Philippines. I bet those was her kinfolk. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you no. love growing up there. So, so did you go to elementary school there? Um, you know, what was your what was your um, student experience like? Education. I came stateside pretty young. Um, my um, parents once they had uh, once my father's. Uh, ended his um, tour. tour, his mm. got honorable discharge. Um, he came over to the States and then he sent for my mother and I. So um, I grew up in the States. I've been home to visit and I know the culture because, you know, I'm, I'm very much, um, you know, involved with my family. Mm-hmm. And uh, but it's, 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 it's different being biracial for me. Like most people, they think, oh, you got two sides. But, you know, you really don't think about it. Yeah, you don't think about sure. it. Yeah. And the, the one thing I do remember that was different for me growing up versus, you know, my uh, friends who aren't biracial and who are African-American is rice. Rice was the difference. Yeah. Because my mom rice with everything. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but, you know, it's funny how people say that, you know, a- about you know different culture, but I find that everybody I meet, <laughs> you know, because you know I work with an international group of people, they all prepare their meals with rice. Everybody, <laughs> yeah. When one day my mother cooked rice, one day we had hot dogs. You know, you boil some hot dogs, hot dogs, some pork and beans. We were little kids, and my mother had rice on the stove, so she put the rice on the plate. And I was like, man, mama. We gonna have rice with a hot dog. We gotta have rice. <laughs> and before I could get the everyday out, it was like a slap. And no, you don't know, talk about the rice. Oh, so that's man. the one thing you never talk about. So, so back yeah. up a little bit. So she did she chop the hot dogs up and put it in the rice? No, it just be rice on the side. Like oh. we could have macaroni and cheese. Like my father taught her how to cook soul food. So oh, my mom's okay. excellent cook. Okay. So we would have like mac and cheese, mashed, you know, like the mashed potatoes and green beans and collards and pork chops yeah, yeah. and rice. Well, you know, I was about to so, say, it sounds kind of interesting, though. Um, I never tried that before because normally we, you know, African-Americans, we take 
hot dogs and chop it up and put it with um with spaghetti noodles and and um you know chop it up like that and that's that's really really good you know back she in did the day. That, but then with rice on the, it's still gonna be rice on the stove. Oh man! <laughs> like, regardless. Wow, that's deep. No matter what what she cooks, it's gonna be. Yeah, rice I only can picture rice with with chicken, beef, maybe lamb. But I know pork. Mm-hmm. You know. I, I can't. Mm-hmm. That, that was hard. But it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't matter what side you had, brother Jerry. Like you might have the, you know, the beef, the pork, and mm-hmm. all those things, and all of the fixings, and you already decided on your starch. You know. Yeah. So, so she gave it to you guys like in a little bowl by itself. It was just plain, and then everything else had its own separate, you know, area. It wasn't all mixed in with broccoli and all of you know the stuff we no, used to. No, it was. It was just another side. But it would be the rice would be on the plate too. It's okay. going to be on the plate. Yeah, because you know here, you know, she was, of course, growing up here, my mom was really good about. Um, she had this thing like it kind of remind me of a volcano. Like when she make mashed potatoes, she put a, like a little, little, uh, <laughs> like a bowl in the middle and pour the pour the gravy. And she did the rice the same way. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. So everything and then the rest of the stuff was like separated. But I would just take the peas and everything and mix it all together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, you mix all everything on your plate. Oh together. yeah, I mean, yeah. Because I didn't like green peas and stuff, so I, and corn, I just mix it all together, and then the gravy and the and the potatoes kind of, you know. Drown I did it not out. think of that. You know what I used to? Do? I would just like hide the peas underneath the the meat. Like you uh-huh. know, start spraying, spread, spreading everything around, uh-huh. and then just kind of tuck a few under there, so you didn't have to eat those. Oh man! So I grew up that way. Just just. And like right now, even now, when I make all my meal, like when I when I um fix my my rice, my my vegetables, you know, my, I love fajitas and everything. I just put it all together, and then I just I think the sauce make it special. So I'm I'm real big on teriyaki sauces and soy sauce and all that kind of stuff. And like right now, I was expecting to be throwing down, but I think I didn't know Kelly was going to have some issues because I think we're having weather issues in this area. Mm. But I was mm-hmm. ready to throw down on some big jumbo shrimp. Uh, I, I, with some barbecue and then it's laying on top of the uh, the, um, the, the, the um, sweet peas, the carrots, and I think a little broccoli. And then I got the white, the, got the brown rice on the side, ready to throw it all together, and then just you know drown in some soy sauce. <laughs> I, I was ready to throw that. Sounds very good. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do the healthy yeah. thing, you know, trying to keep yeah. the immune system. Now, speaking of the immune system and you know all the noise out there, when, so when when, the, when the, do you have a song coming out about what we're going through right now and in the video being prepared? I have a whole album on what we're going through and went through. It's called uh, "Fade to Black," mm. and uh, I did "Fade to Black" right after George Floyd. Mm. Um. I did a song called Say Their Names, mm-hmm. which is Black Lives Matter. Right. But then for me, the conclusion was it doesn't matter. Mm. Not the end conclusion, but that's part of the lyric. Yeah. And the reason being is I got a list. I started researching all of the people because we never talk about the people who got away with it. The right, officers right. weren't held accountable. Why don't we remember those? Why don't we remember those names? Mm. So I thought there should be some sort of record. Um, something that's that's there, that's tangible, that's right. where people can listen to all of those names. Mm. So as the song progresses, progresses, you hear me say the names of the officers. You know, in the case of you know uh, Trayvon Martin, then you give the name of the officer, and it's like not guilty. Then mm. the next one, not guilty, not guilty, wow. and then I end it on George Floyd because at that time we didn't know that there was going to be a guilty verdict. That's right. We were hopeful, but we didn't really know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so you, so you have the visual ready. So I know you. Are, so do you get visions? You know, once you once the songs are completed, you know, produced and mastered, do you get a vision? Do you see it yourself, or do you have a team to help put the idea together? Um, I have a team because I can't, you know be in front and behind. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm mostly the post. I like to be there in the post-production and the editing is where I really, where really comes together for me with a feel. Um, I haven't done any videos for Fade to Black, um, partially because of COVID, Mm -hmm. you know, and then the vision that I have for the actual videos um, at that time, I wasn't able to to get those done, but it's a it's a really it's a really deep album. The first 
part of the album is, is pretty strong. If you go to the website, um, officiallyladyj.com, uh, we start off with a Negro hymn, Go Down Moses, but we, we introduce, instead of saying uh, that there'll be no more institutional racism no more, mm. and it goes into uh, the Black Lives Matter song, and then Rabbit Get a Gun. Um, I thought about, you know, how Aubrey's um, rest his soul and, and prayers for the families yeah. involved, but um, it would have been, if he, what if he had had a gun? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he'd been in prison. So, you know, and it's like every you know, and you know the old saying, like you know how everybody having fun until the rabbit get the gun. Mm. So um, we, I did some lyrics on that one, and then uh, Christians unite. I hate this mask, which was a favorite. Now that's one the church people. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, judging yeah. by the amount of um, in home Bible studies I'm seeing <laughs> in my neighborhood, it, it's, it's a lot. Of Bible, it's a lot of people reading the Bibles at home. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We're friends. <laughs> <laughs> We're friends. Yeah. yeah, friends have Bibles. That's right. That's right. Now you you started really really early in the in the in the gospel uh, music industry um, with your dad. Tell us a little bit about that experience. Absolutely. My father is Pastor uh, Jimmy Bell. And at the time, he was just Reverend Jimmy Bell. And he sang, he did the Bobby Jones show. Um, he opened up for like Mighty Clouds of Joy and shared the stage with a, uh, uh, a number of, um, of gospel greats. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had a chance, you know, we were doing background for him. So that's like where I cut my teeth. Like, you know, you learn how to sing in church. And when you sing in church, everybody's like, oh, yeah, sing, sing. But, you know, you can tell if you can really sing. Because when you sing for tr- and sing in church, <laughs> even as a child, That's right. if you can sing, they'll say, sing, girl, sing. <laughs> and they take their shoes off and, and tissues and stuff and they handkerchief and they like they're going to throw it at you. But if you cannot sing, they say things like, mm, yeah. sing for Jesus. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Bless the <laughs> Try to make your background singer. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So when I first started singing, I was a sang for Jesus. But then, you know, you grow up, you learn, and uh, you, you start exercising your gifts. And then my daddy gave me the opportunity to sing, so I cut my teeth there. And then I did a lot of studio background. Mm-hmm. And studio singing is totally different from singing yeah, at church yeah. functions and, yeah, live. And then from there... Um, I was saved at such a young age and the Lord filled me with the Holy Spirit at a young age. I knew the loneliness of finding Christ early and waiting for marriage. Mm. Because you're not doing what everybody else is doing. Cause you know, the eighties, everybody was like turning up and going crazy. Yeah. That was, that was an interesting um, decade. <laughs> the eighties. Oh yes. Oh yeah. yes. And to watch that and to only have like Moody Bible Institute, which is nothing wrong with Moody. But when you have all those other songs playing like New Jack City around the school and you trying to stay saved and you're like, oh, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I don't want to hear those. Things. It's it's a battle. So yeah. thank God for groups like Commission and things like and mm-hmm. uh, the wine in that time. So when they came on the scene, I was like, you know, it got to be other people were mm-hmm. doing what, That's doing right. the way I'm feeling. How can we promote that music? Yeah. So I began writing my column for the Call and Post, which is the oldest uh, Black-owned um, newspaper in, in the nation. So, owned and operated. So, um, I have my column there, and then the Lord blessed where it turned into a television a video show. Oh, wow. So, I hosted a gospel video show. Mm. So that's my pre-marriage, pre-kid. <laughs> you know. But, awesome. you know, once you get married... <laughs> <laughs> Things change, huh? Once you had a baby, you know, all your love and ministry starts at the home. So I, right. all that kind of, you know, went went away. Yeah. And then uh, my husband got called into ministry. So then we started, you know, pa- he started pastoring. I'm, I'm not a pastorette. He started pastoring and I'm first lady. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, now, you know, that the children are, are older and they don't need me to hover. That's right. Like um, I can, the, my husband released me and he said, baby, now's the time, you know, if the Lord is speaking to you, go for it. And I thank God 
and releasing me to do these mm-hmm. things that I'm able to do through Christ. Yeah. So um, as an, as an artist and, and you know, it's, it's so many, you know, the world, man, we have so many gospel artists out there. Of course, you know, you have your, I, I'm going to just call them A-listers, you know, the ones that's, you know, out there in the front row, the, the, you know, not the openers, but um, the ones that um, people know by, by, their, by their brand names. And then a lot of them on the radio right now, um, you know, spreading the gospel. Do you see gospel music getting stronger or is it just still kind of when that same, you know, behind the, the secular music? You know. I should be very careful right here because I don't want to get blackballed, but I'm going to be honest. I see gospel music is being more commercialized. You hear that a lot. Yeah. I see gospel music being more secular, that uh, gospel music in total is always seeking the approval of the world. Yeah. Um, and I think that we got to get back and, and I'm not speaking to the hearts of every A-lister because obviously only God knows a person's heart. I'm just seeing seeing what, what I see and what differences I try to make and adjustments I try to make to stay true to self. Like I wrote myself a letter before I got started and a list of things that I'm not going to compromise on. Um, because I think that as you get into the mechanics and the machine of gospel, the business of gospel, it's it's easy to to lose your way and to get caught up in the materialism, even in ministry, mm-hmm. the materialism, the power, yes. you know. And um, I don't think that those things are profitable to one's soul. Mm-hmm. You know, like the word of God says, you know, um, why gain the world and lose your soul? So when I write, I always keep the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Lord, how can I help your people? What's the situation that my music can minister to? What not? I'm not looking for a hook that mm-hmm. you could just say over and over and over again, and over and over, which is good. Right. You know, some people you, know, you can meditate on that. That could be the word of God. But I want to get down. I want this word of God <laughs> to go into their situation down to the very marrow that it hit them straight at their heart that there's no denying mm. so that and then once they feel it lord once they see themselves in those lyrics once they hear the pain and and, and they connect mm-hmm. lord give me the resolve give me your word and tell me where to put it in the song that we can pull them out of that bond that's right so that's your prayer mm. that's that's my prayer. that's my prayer so when i wrote way of escape god provides a way of escape you know and then i i, I it's it's point of the verse it says you know 3 a.m where's my phone mm. facetime me i'm alone mm. and then it's like you hear the background saying don't touch it don't touch it mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, god provides a way of escape so you know those sort of things you know and even in like um you're supposed to be a christian you mm. know that's uh a song about not going there, you know how wow. like we're set. People always say, "Oh, you're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to be a Christian." I hate when people say that. So you saying you know? what people? So you saying what people thinking? Yeah, it's, you're supposed to be a Christian. <laughs> so, and when, <laughs> when, uh, but it's, I wrote I wrote a song called "You're Supposed to Be a Christian," and I wrote it because you know, like, um, it's about uh, a. Uh, a lady, just everyday things, you know, like she'll say, um, she's driving in traffic and then she say, oh no, you're not going to cut in front of me and flip the bird. I can't <laughs> hear all that you're saying, girl, but yes, I know those words, you know, and, you know, and I'm sick <laughs> of people trying me because they don't know my past. Just be glad we own this freeway in the streets. I beat you. That's when I pause. Pause, pause, on Jesus I call, call, call. I don't want to fall, fall, fall. And here yeah. we go. Here's our hook. I don't want to ruin my testimony so they can say, you're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed <laughs> to be a Christian. Love it, love it, love it. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. 
how how you how how's the um, internet working for you? Have you embraced it? Um, is it is it have you made it part of your your you know your complete brand and marketing for a little? You know, of course, you can't do a whole lot in persons right now. But have you embraced the, the everything about the internet? You know, from Clubhouse yes. to I love the YouTube. Internet. So tell us about it. You tell us about your experience with it, the good and the bad. Well, Okay, well, I have nothing bad to say about the internet. I got, I love the internet. The internet is my friend. I love <laughs> Facebook. You can follow me at Officially Lady J on Facebook. Hey. You can follow me at Officially Lady J on Instagram, on Snapchat, Officially Lady J, <laughs> on YouTube, Officially Lady J, my website, OfficiallyLadyJ.com. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I even I even started a clubhouse. Oh, clubhouse! What? Officially, lady, who? <laughs> Man, I gotta check you out on clubhouse. Then I haven't done anything with it yet. I'm oh, okay. Yeah, you gotta have a club. Clubhouse is intimidating. They got a lot of lot of stuff on clubhouse. Oh. Yeah, you got some. Yeah, you got some some serious ballers out there on clubhouse. You know, and, yeah, and those are the ones that I, runs I everything. Way to TikTok, brother. I'm on. Um, you know, I'm comfortable a little bit more comfortable on TikTok. Messing yeah. around with that. <laughs> yeah, they they trying to push me on um, TikTok because you know I'm a, I'm a puppeteer. So um, should be a, please put Skeet on TikTok. Yeah, I'm a, yeah, Skeet. Skeet he been yeah. We we took a little break in in um in September, so uh, mm-hmm. we kind of yeah we we had to kind of refresh a little bit. So he's he's making his way to TikTok. You got puppets on TikTok, but they're not as good as Skeet. You got to put Skeet on TikTok, and they're not saying the same thing Skeet would say. That's right. <laughs> like, Skeet, that's right, Skeet. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to him about that. <laughs> we gotta get talk on TikTok. To him about. Yeah, he's so busy trying to keep his TV episodes going <laughs> on four televisions. Yeah. He's too busy to do t- TikTok, but he's gonna get there. But, but you know what? You know what, brother? If you took a snippet of the TV show, mm-hmm. but you got put plenty. it on TikTok, and it's always just like you know how to have that sh- boom, yeah. and then when it's on, that's right, boom, that's yeah. right. Yeah, we're gonna make our way. Mm-hmm. Yep, we we got we got enough episodes, enough segments to do it. Yeah, and I matter of fact, I'm getting texts mm-hmm. now of, of all these little kids are requesting to um to uh, one of the things we're we're looking to do, and, and this could be something your church would be could be interesting with the young people. We're looking for talent to um because you know right now um Skeet has his own band, uh, mm-hmm. and um they Positive Nation Pop Band featuring PJ and my daughter. And uh, but we're going to open it up to um, other performers, young performers. They can they can send the videos in, and we will air them, you know, with the permission of their parents. So if you have any young talent, and they want to get on cable cast, you know, send them, have them send them to okay, me. Okay, that That's would be right. amazing. Jerry Rose yeah, Live, absolutely. I'm trying to think, trying to think who I know because with COVID, you know, every week gone yeah. virtual. For yeah, about, a lot of people virtual. But just yeah, send an announcement. You know, tell them to send it in. Mm-hmm. They can do like absolutely. they do TikTok. You know. Send a, send a reel, and let's mm-hmm. check them out so we can get out there on cable cast. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, we appreciate you though. And look, one of the, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, your knowledge of marketing. How, so, how you been embracing marketing? I know everything you have is officially Lady J, but as far as like the, you know, do you know how to play around with the algorithms and you know when to do this, when to go to thirty seconds, when to do a minute, when to do an hour? You know, have you been able to juggle all of the different? techniques that's required to get views or like me we don't really worry about it because i know people see it because they email us all the time you know telling us how they enjoy what we're doing so how how you feel in that part of it you know the math part um, of it well i i i look at the numbers but i'm more concerned about the souls behind right. the numbers right. like um i don't look at the likes because i, I i'm like I don't know why like a, a thousand people to see your stuff, but then like maybe 10 people will push the like button. Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, that but is, I'm like, yeah. I see you looking at it. But you I know, I think that's a, that's a, that's a generation <laughs> thing, you know, I think, I, and then, you know, it's like this too, you know how people understand like, um, when you, when you move things forward, like, you know, you pay okay. someone to pay forward. That's, that's the same thing on the internet. You know, if you like someone, that person will pay for and like you. You know, but a lot of times the generations um, see it differently because it's funny because um, I will get phone calls. I was like, mm-hmm. you're my friend. I will never see you. They said, yeah, I see all your stuff. I'm like, no, really? You know? Right. And so, and, and right. I hear a lot of people say the same thing, you know, especially because, you know, especially, I'm talking about maybe like over 45, I'm thinking. But then the younger mm-hmm. people, like my daughter, I go check out her page and she got, 
She ain't even posted but five minutes ago, like 300 views, you know? Yeah, you know, but I, it's interesting because, like, I know on Instagram, I'll see exactly how many people have viewed it. And they're good numbers, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then on on uh, Facebook, you know, some they'll publish, you know, how many people have seen it. So I don't, I don't know what the secrets are. I, I think I'm using more of a, a gunshot, a sawed-off gunshot approach to this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just like, Lord, you gave me the material wherever it's going to go. I'm just throwing seeds out like Johnny Appleseed yeah. and hoping that they fall in good ground and that they be able to reap a harvest. So I say, Lord, that, all of that's on you. That's but right. as he, as the Holy Spirit drops things in my spirit, I'll go ahead and I just post them. So right. it's it's not it's not thought about as like... um. Okay, we've got to market this. I'm going to do this. It's more, everything with me is feel. Mm-hmm. Everything. Yeah, yeah, feel it. Yeah, I feel you. Okay. You know, YouTube is kind of interesting, too, because I used to do a lot of live, and you get different reports than you do when you look at the views. The back the back reports is way different. And I remember one time mm-hmm. I used to look at some of them YouTube live, because I used to do YouTube live a lot, and I was like, wow, 482,000 views? When that happen? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. because people pop in and they pop out and they count everything. And then they give you the time, the duration, the period, what they like better, what videos were more impressionable. You know, it was that's a real interesting report with YouTube. And I forgot mm-hmm. what yeah. level you have to be to see that. Um, but I was, I'm interested. I'm actually looking at getting back into um, streaming our own television content again on YouTube. Because what happened, what got me out of it was because it wasn't, it wasn't favoring, you know, copywritten music. You know, YouTube mm-hmm. was having problems. Like even right now, the artists would give us their songs to air on my my daughter's television show, and then we uploaded to YouTube for those who can't catch the show during the morning or whatever times. And then I get a a claim <laughs> report. Yeah, and you know you can only get so many. Well, all. they tell us all the time that they've been letting us go. Where it's not, it's, they said there's no reflection on our record. I even contact uh, the label and the artist, mm-hmm. and they, this is like a big time. These are big time artists, you know. You're talking about, and then they release it, but it's like, how are you going to get your stuff um, promoted as an indie? You know, even though you were you under these different labels and everything because of the way the music being distributed, it's going to create a yeah. problem for their marketing. And I think they want it. I think those distributors want it like that, you know, because people can manage their own distribution on their own just through social media you know so how you feel about that yeah. the, the, you know having more power now with your own your own music distribution how you feel about that I, I i love it i love it um you know there's so many so many artists um who came before me before their time that i know that had great music great content but they had no way to bring it to market and it's the same thing for small businesses mm-hmm. now like, be a small business and never never open up a physical store and then just 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 doing so well on the internet because you can bring your product directly to the people exactly. now it's probably making people who are the gatekeepers a little uncomfortable yeah uh, for the rest of us you know and I, I believe it's all it's all preparation you know like uh, our album the second coming which is coming out on February the 22nd. Yeah, I saw uh, that on your website, what? officiallylady.com. Right. right. So, you know, the the Lord, he says, when this gospel is preached all over the world, and I believe that the Internet is part of, the, of that gospel being preached all over the world. I mean, when you have, like you say, your Asian friend able to know all of the line dances, I mean, there is such a... a a blurred line as far as people and and who they are and how they interact because it's truly becoming a melting pot. The world is, is. becoming really really small because of this internet. Yes, and I think that it's expediting. You know, the gospel being preached and that the Lord is coming back soon. So those people who hold the keys to the gates, who want to hold on to that power, who still want to block people and they feel like they're bigger because they have that option or feel like they can say no to someone. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that the, the internet is kind of like serving everybody notice, that's you know, right, it's like the, right. Lord, the Lord moving those people out of the way. Cause look at what COVID did brother Jerry. Yeah. It, leveled, it 
everything. It sure did, man. Everybody's home together. The movie star, the A listers, the B listers, the C and the Z's. A listers, A listers on the same TikTok. I'm on. That's right. <laughs> you know, the same Spotify, <laughs> iHeartRadio. Yeah. Like me. Yeah. Exactly. Like a church. You know, as um, you know, and, and when I say this, I don't say this. You know, to, to sit here trying to, you know, say who be calling me, you know, asking mm-hmm. requests. But it's so interesting now that you're getting um, radio promoters because you know FM radio is not as popular as it was before. You know, because mm-hmm. people are not in their cars listening uh, to to the, the the signal that's traveling through their you know, through their community in a 100 mile radius or 75 mile radius. Now everybody's listening to their podcast coming through there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and I'm going to tell you, Lady J, I saw this coming a mile away. Mm-hmm. I said that I always thought and felt that the car industry kind of dictates the music industry in a way, because if you think about it, when we started out with, I don't, we started with eight track tapes. Remember, eight track tapes. You know, that's a lot of tapes you got to be hauling in your car to play that thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. But mm-hmm. people was buying music, and they was taking it everywhere they went. You know, they would listen to it in their home, in their car. So it was a big part of them. And so then when it when the industry made it easy, and the car said, okay, you don't need the 8-track. We got the CD players now. You just, mm-hmm. you know, it holds, some of those cars hold, what, 16 CDs? And then as soon as the technology changed, and then now you can you you Bluetooth your phone, which holds mm-hmm. all of your library and your stream, your your cloud is in your cloud now. Now you have a, a unlimited playlist and it's streaming mm-hmm. right through your car. So now what mm-hmm. what, did, what did that do to the FM stations? You know, it, it kind of now it put them on the same plane. They no different. They in the same situation that I'm in. You got a stream to be heard. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. because um, people are not going to be driving through your town. I start off in Maryland, and when I head all the way to North Carolina, I'm listening to my same playlist, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. because now the cars are built with Wi-Fi, so you don't get no interruption, you know. Right. Yeah, so right. That, I always felt that way. Did Did you see that coming, that, the you know, the car industry, is, is it involved, yeah, evolved, that it, it kind of changed the, the game? Because Bluetooth technology and Wi-Fi technology is, is, is tremendous right now. It's, it's, it enabled us to do some of the things we weren't able to do, like work from home, you know? Right. I think everything is going back to what it was before. Like um, when COVID happened and everyone was at home, mm-hmm. you you found out that you didn't need as much stuff. Right. You didn't have as many. The places that you needed to go weren't as important mm-hmm. as what you thought before. You know, like uh, going to the gym, that stuff you could do at home. Oh, and it calls families here. to reach. I, I gotta go to the gym. <laughs> they got more equipment. They got way more equipment. Yeah, man. I gotta put an hour in. No interruption. <laughs> Can't do that home. All right. I put an X on. Put an X on that one. <laughs> Cross that out. No, that's that's definitely an X. <laughs> yeah, man. I gotta go to the gym. Yeah, but, but you, you, there was no, there was no, no, uh, no gym to go to. Like in my song. I hate this mask. Near the end, this this man is like breaking his neck to get out of the house. Mm. And he's just like, Oh, uh, baby, you know, I'm about to go, I'm about to go to the gym. And she like, No, the gym is closed. You can't go to the gym. Uh, me, me and my boys, we we about to have us a little drink. You're not going to have a little drink. The bar is closed. <laughs> the bar's closed. So, then, so, so then the brother's like, uh, well, baby, I I got. I'm going to see my mama. I ain't, I ain't seen my mama in a little bit. <laughs> he I can't say, get out. I say, brother, your mama's scared of COVID. She ain't opening up the door mm, for nobody. That's my mama. So he trapped <laughs> down. So he got to get to know her now. He got to spend some time with her. So, so then it's the song progresses. Uh, you get, he gets a phone call from a young lady, and she's like, "Hey, daddy." And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to get by there. She, I thought you was coming through, you know, <laughs> because it was messing up the game. Right. The hotel was closed. Mm-hmm. There's, you can't say you're working late at work no more. That's right. Really saw, you know, with the condition of the family. Yeah. And, uh, and and you couldn't go to your mama's. You couldn't leave nobody. Where are you going to stay? That's right. Everybody's house. Everybody's yeah. doors were closed. Yeah, going out was going to the park and just sitting in your car. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the ducks. I'm just sitting home eating, getting uh, gaining that COVID twenty two. 
<laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, the game did change in 2020. Of course, now, you know, 2021, people are taking more chances now, so they're doing what they want to do. You know, it's like, hey, it's open. It's on you. But you, would, but you know what, brother? You would think that once they saw that, that everybody would just run to God. You know, mm-hmm. oh, you know, Lord, I know you real. Lord, you kept us from COVID or Lord, you yeah. know, although we lost people, uh, I, I just thank you. I appreciate my life. I mm-hmm. appreciate my but it, as soon as they put a little crack in, yeah. these folks are going to go down to partying and drinking. And I'm like, what? You made it. That's a good so point. Crazy. That's a good point because, you know, I was really surprised that, it, that there weren't more pastors on that TV shows or that podcast or whatever just, you know, talking about this is the end and we need to prepare ourselves, you know, you know. Of course, you got some people just stocking up on food because they know the prices of food going up. <laughs> That's happening. <laughs> and you can't harbor but so much gas <laughs> in, your, in your garage. <laughs> but I was really surprised that um that, that the churches weren't really, you know, at that point ready. Because, you know, years ago, you used to always hear them talk about, yeah, we're living in the end of times now. But what is this? Because nobody yeah. wants to hear end of time words. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, the Bible talks about itching ears. What are, what are the hot topics for for preaching, uh, prosperity, mm-hmm. right? Abundance and all that good stuff. Like, put your money on Jesus and all your problems are going to go away. Yeah, it's, like a slot, it's like a slot machine. Yeah, it's like a slot yeah. machine. Put your dollar in here and get this. You got a blessing coming. Yeah. It's a blessing coming. Yeah, $50 buy you 50 blessings 50 times. Yeah, it's just, it's just, I, was, I was really, really surprised. I was just thinking, it's funny you put that. I was just thinking about that yesterday. I was like, wow, you don't hear these guys. Um, you don't, you're not seeing visual of people up on the pulpit just begging for forgiveness and crying. And, you know, ain't a whole bunch of showtime and just they spending the whole time praying. You don't see that. I'm, re- I'm really surprised, you know, the, the people are not. Like, I know I have a lot of friends because I do it myself. You know, we spend, I'm able to spend more time with them because I, I can take longer walks you know, before mm-hmm. I clock in. So when I take my dog out with me, because I know she like to walk, and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm able to listen to music and read, you know, read my favorite scripture on my phone. I read my prayer. It's like I can spend a whole 30 minutes, you know, without mm-hmm. no interruption, you know. Because, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of different sometimes when you sit there on your knees because your mind just be racing, all kinds of stuff just be entering your mind. You just be getting visuals and you're not focused. Because I hear a lot of people say they don't know how to meditate because they can't focus like that. And they, they, mm-hmm. they, they're trying to get taught that. Um, next thing you know, if they're if they too mellow, they sleep. But what people don't realize that when you're very close to sleep, the subconscious mind is starting to wake up and the conscious mind is starting to you know, get out of your way. That's when you're able to really speak and hear God. That's when you can really listen to him. Um, mm-hmm. But people don't take advantage of that. And they just, like you said, they, I don't know what to say. It's just different to me. I just, was, I'm just surprised. <laughs> Put do, it that we, way. Do a, we do a lot more talking to God than we do listen. True. And so it needs to be more conversational and less of a monologue or wish list. Um, as far as preaching about the end coming, that that's my husband like he he is all about the perfecting of the saints yeah. not the uh, be a part of our group our religious our church you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. it's about where, where is your soul in this what are i want he wants everybody to 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 make it in to, to get into yeah heaven. yeah i'm gonna have to listen to him where is he I he's wanna... good pastor t.l wilson um, he, he have a podcast. The name of the church is Real Gospel Missionary Baptist Church, and he got he got these little segments that I take and I put on his TikTok. He's not a big, a very a big social media guy. Right. You go on TikTok to Pastor T. L. Wilson. Um, that's probably the where you can get like the little quick snippets. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. So he not and, on YouTube. Then, so he not on YouTube or anything he, like that. He, the church is on YouTube. Oh. Real Gospel Missionary Baptist Church. It's a lot of videos. He started a YouTube channel under Pastor T. L. Wilson, and it has this, but it has the church services first. So you have to listen to the okay. church service yeah, and then go to yeah, the scripture. But the podcast, I seen one. The podcast, yeah. you can go straight to the sermons and his sermons. My my husband, I I praise God for that man. You know, um, sometimes it it does get a little, 
a little, a little, a little bit much because <laughs> when you go to the pastor and and he washing you with the letter of the word all the time. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, like, yeah, the water be like, well, pastor, it. it's thirty days <laughs> later, <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but he, he is, he is such a, he is such a joy for me because yeah. one thing that I can say is. You know, and I, I used to tease the church. I said, you know what? Let me tell you, y'all pastor is a real man of God. But the day he stopped being one, oh, get your cameras ready. Best <laughs> believe I'm going to come up in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. That's powerful. <laughs> but you know what? I, got, I, I guess I got to take back some some of what I said because I know Dr. V, she's one of our podcasters. She does a Tuesday night Bible study. She comes hard. She comes pretty hard. She she don't pull no punches on people in her Bible study sometimes, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but what he's been really been preaching the last two years, and and it shows in my music too. If my people who the Second Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name mm-hmm. would humble themselves and pray, um, you know, have, if we would turn from our wicked our wicked ways, you know. So I I believe that the lifting of COVID in this pandemic is based on the church folks and we that call ourselves Christians Mm. and members of the body of Christ. Because the scripture says, then he'll hear from heaven and forgive our sins and will heal the land. So I think that if we want the land healed, then there's some work that we have to do as Christians in turning from our wicked ways and getting it right with Christ. Yes, so true. I just keep saying... um... These words that the, only the strong will survive. That's oh. what I keep saying when it comes to our health. You know, the church has been so unhealthy for so many years, you know, and you're seeing these these, these, um, these members, you know, coming and going. I, rem- I think I remember the pastor behind me, what Bishop told me, I think he told me this last summer. I can't remember. He told me he lost 48 members. He, 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 um, had service for 48 deaths when well, they were 48 members, you know, mm-hmm. you know, were they just people from the community as well? But I remember that was like the summer when he gave me that number. I keep seeing that number 48. Wow. That's yeah. a lot of people. That's yeah. A, we were very fortunate. Uh, none of our immediate congregation, uh, we've had congregants who have relatives who passed away from COVID, but we, we stayed close for a really long time because um, pastor was all about, you know what? He didn't want not one person. Cause we got a lot of elderly people that come to our church and he didn't want that weighing on his spirit mm. that because he opened the doors of the church, somebody potentially got sick and lost their lives. So when we finally opened based on, you know, what Ohio state of Ohio said regulations, um, he got two of those industrial um, air purifiers mm-hmm. that they use in the restaurants and buildings. Yeah. You know? And it, it's way more powerful than the building that, you know, for the space that it covers. And then he put a third like in his office. And then, you know, we take the temperatures. Everyone wears a mask. They're sanit- we sanitize. And even when we pass the note, the mic, I'm like the sanitizing germaphobe has yeah. to be like, let's go and say something. I'll come right back. Hold on a second. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm beating the ushers there. Hold on. Hold That's on. right. Yeah, it's different times now, you know. You know, it's funny. I was, I looked that up about um the saying the strong, only the strong will survive. And actually it was, it was, it was, uh, it was said by a scientist named Charles Darwin. He says, not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survive. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. Mm. That is, that's, that's pretty much where we are right now. Who's adaptable to this change? This is going to, they keep saying it's a new normal that's, mm-hmm. a, that's upon us, you know, and what is it going to look mm-hmm. like? You know, is it going to look like where we are now? Now people out there now, it's like, oh, you know, I want to live, you know, and I'm going to die trying. <laughs> You know, yeah. that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, so but it's sad, though, because you got the grandparents that are trying to protect themselves. Yeah. And uh, younger people just running amok because they feel they could beat yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. They, they could be they, extinct they, soon. There's going to be a lot of grandparents around soon. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. Well, Lady yeah. J, it's 
our time is up, but I want you to um give give people a word of encouragement. Tell them when they can, you know, tell them where your website is again, and um and they will meet you again because we have other shows that's waiting to have you. Amen. Oh, praise God! Praise God! First, I want to say thank you to you, um, Brother Jerry, for the opportunity. Um, it Amen. has been such a blessing to meet with you and your crew, Paula. I look forward to possibly meeting Kelly on the next occasion. Um, and as far as a, a word of encouragement, I just want the the listeners to remember: only what you do for Christ will last. Mm, I like Only that. what you do for Christ will last. Yep. That's yep. right. And then as far as my website, again, it's officially ladyj.com. We have our Christmas music. I have a Christmas album that's um available now. Um and you know, just go to the website and listen to it or Google me, officially Lady J, and I, I will come up. But make sure you put officially. <laughs> you don't get that home sticker, lady. Officially. Or make sure you got your filters on, your block, your Norton's on, <laughs> McAfee. Yeah. Okay. If you listen to the music, you know, just just be open. Just right. be open. Yeah. They're all all the songs are like a conversation you're having. Most yeah. of the songs. I like your sound. I I really like your sound. I I can really see your your sound itself being secular really easy. You know because it, mm. it's very um. Yeah, impactful. Your voice itself, you know, the way your, your the way your tone, your beats hit, you know, because your voice is almost like um, music itself anyway. The way mm-hmm. you drop your lyrics, so mm-hmm. so you could easily been a spoken word artist, you know. Oh wow! But you know what throws me off about the spoken word? How everybody speak the spoken word the same way, and then <laughs> I ran into the light. <laughs> that light so bright. But I guess it's what they say, you know, not how they say it. You know, it's what they say. You know. I'm like, where, can I get a different cadence, please? Yeah, we well, can change the game. Yeah, go in and change the game. Well, it's nah, a, it's I'm going to yeah. stay in my lane, brother. I feel you. I'm going to stay in my lane. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> um, but look, it's been a pleasure having you on here. You will meet Kelly because Kelly actually has her own television show that I produce called The Kelly Holland Show. And as soon as we start booking for guests again, we will have you on the guest list. So um, let me know. Yeah, I'll yeah. book my. Phone. I'll be there. That's right. I know everybody probably been, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, they've been inboxing me like, where where are the new shows? I was on the show. Well, the station is on fall break, and um, yeah. you know everybody need a break occasionally. So we took a break with them. <laughs> so um, well, Kelly, good for Holland. you. That's wisdom. Because if you do, if you don't take a break, yeah, I and love you this just stuff. Keep toilet, you know, you gotta. Yeah, you gotta I'm, get that time. That you yeah, need. I love I love this stuff. I mean, you know, media. I love media. When, when this happened, and you know, of course, you and I already talked a lot about social media. But I mean, the television, the radio. When that when that world came together, boy, I was smiling. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going <laughs> to figure this thing out. I'm going to figure it out. So, so you guys, you guys are thriving in in COVID. Yeah, yeah, and I don't have to go yeah. that far. <laughs> <laughs> Before yeah. we was we were dragging suitcases and suit, you know Delta yeah. Airlines not friendly when you got a lot of suitcase a lot of luggage. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, man, they got a lot of my money, so um, <laughs> they were able to you know convert that money into other things. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, just like all the other big studios, they 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 make it out pretty well. The NFL, the you know the ESPNs and the late night shows, all of them are. Able to have more guests on the show where before mm-hmm. it was who can arrive to the studio and you know now mm-hmm. they can they can plug in anybody who has a good Wi Fi. <laughs> you know what was funny about the late night shows? Not all the late night shows are funny. I thought they weren't all funny, but then one day I watched them and they were from home telling those sad jokes and they didn't have nobody <laughs> laugh, pretending to laugh. Uh-huh. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> that that was funny. <laughs> That was funny. But they're getting better now. They're getting better. And, you know, they're getting better. But, you know, as a matter of fact, um, real quick, because, you know, a lot of people are spending so much time in their homes now, I'm starting to hear about how people are starting to change room colors and they're starting to order furniture and 
starting to do upgrade how you live in your house. You don't notice that your house is out, is outdated until you go look oh, at a new house. And you now you want that new house because they have things in there that you don't have in your house. I said, well, this uh-huh. is the time that you can put those things in your house. Get yourself a plumber, a handyman. They're not as, that expensive. Change over the fixtures, you know, doorknobs and faucets and sinks. Mm-hmm. And, you know, real inexpensive things can do wonders. A new paint. You know, new paint on the wall, you know, do wonders to your to your new carpeting, you know. Do, do some things, you know. Because, of course, the housing market um, went shot up again, especially in the DMV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they got houses starting to, they got houses that cost a half a million dollars. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was wow. probably worth 250 <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, real easy. Real easy. Oh, matter of fact, um, more than that. <laughs> more than a half wow. a million. Yeah. In the DMV, uh-huh. and you and you and you can walk around your house in five minutes. <laughs> Isn't that something? I know. So all uh, you need to do is keep buying blouses and suit jackets. Yeah. <laughs> so I say, you know, go ahead and invest in your property and um, get the most out of it. You know, God has blessed you. You know, with with that property, you know, do something with it. Don't just let it, you know, just fall apart. Mm-hmm. You know, I went out there and did a lot of stuff myself. I did, you know, fixed the deck up. I said I've been spending so much time on it. You know, instead of waiting every five years to stain them, I'm gonna stain it now. <laughs> replace wow. some, replace some planks and put some. I put some LED lights so it look like I'm it look like we're in an outdoor nightclub. <laughs> Me and my wife. Oh. <laughs> we out there toasting. Oh, another yeah. new set. Another That's right. new set. <laughs> That's right, grilling, grilling, grilling our own food, and you know, yeah. just having fun. You know, and just enjoying. Right. You know, enjoy but your you know, home. It, it, some people it didn't work out well because you know domestic violence went up thirty percent when, yeah. when COVID happened. Yeah, I know. I heard, I, and I had a yeah. feeling that was going to happen, especially when they when they closed the bars. <laughs> you, mm. you, you couldn't find your weed man, <laughs> you know, because he was gone. <laughs> yeah, it did change the 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 the, the demographic. Everything changed. Um, the yeah. domino effect. So, do you you think it's, what's your prediction, uh, brother uh, Jerry? You think it's going to ever go back? Like, you know, the, the you think those days are behind us? The concerts, the travel. The no, they're going to they gonna still give those things. <laughs> they're going to open it up. It's just up to you if, you know, if you're going to make it to the next day. <laughs> mm. Like, I rode the train. My wife and I um, had to take the train back because my daughter kept the car. And mm-hmm. we... Um, you know, they supposed to sit you together if you come in, come as a family, but she was she was across the aisle from me. I was sitting next to a stranger, <laughs> but I Ooh. I didn't take no chances. So I got me an N95 mask. So I was ready, and I had my right. Gator mask. But um, we we had chance to spend time in the dining car. They they were really good about keeping that clean. It wasn't crowded or nothing like that. So we spent time. You could plug your phones up and watch TV and stuff like that. So um, they were really good. They were really friendly. They were, you know, I think. Some things going to change, you know, the way we travel. Um, like I heard Vegas went back to normal already. Oh, my. I think some of the resorts been doing pretty good because I know my wife and them went to the Dominican Republic and I think they're about to go to New Mexico. They go to Mexico. Went to Mexico. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. they, they, you, look, you go on the, the sites and look at the resorts and, they, and they, they're, they're following protocol. But I think, you know, I'm not sure about what the nightclubs are going to do, you know. Because those guys used to make a lot of money. And what about they, those cruise ships? Yeah, you know, they're out there too because my wife, um, her, her stylist, um, when family went, this was cheap too. They were $100. They just had to make it down to Florida. And they was out there for four days and five nights or something like that for 100 bucks. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so they're making it. It's out there. The activities are there. It's just, it's just up to you if you want to take a chance. Yeah. You know? No, thank you. <laughs> That's what I I'll say. Just keep going virtually until uh, Skeet Skeet has a show or something. <laughs> yeah, if I was about to, yeah, and you know, and that kind of slow Skeet, Skeet then. Don't have COVID. I know Skeet. Yeah, Skeet. Yeah, yeah Skeet. He's he still make me wear a mask though. But it was funny about him because actually he was booked to do live appearances. That was one of the that was the blueprint for him that we were going to do live shows. And um, have all these kids come into the community center to see him, you know. And then it changed to, okay, let's just make some movies and then the kids can come. But then, that, you know, the community centers had issues because they were following state guidelines. And then, then that's when he ended up becoming a television show. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And then we're wow. looking at um, possibly um, moving into life-size puppets where we can hire entertainers that they can, you know. But the theaters, a lot of these theaters that we were booking to do the musicals, 
that mm-hmm. we were planning to do with him because we got a lot of music. My daughter's putting like a lot of nursery rhymes and stuff out for small kids. Um, nice. they, they they still not looking to open up until the first of the year. A lot of the theaters. Wow, have you illustrated him? Like, does he have does he have a book in the works? Yes, he got a book in the work. Man, my son is working on that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. he has a book. But you know, the schools are open, so he may be able to do some um, auditoriums. You know, like uh, assemblies. Well, actually, we've been doing virtual um, classrooms with a lot of the schools. They've been doing like the uh, the daycares. They uh, we've been doing Zoom, and then now nice. parents are like want to do more one on ones with him with that child because some of the, the children are bored at home. They're the only child, so and they yeah. use that as an incentive, as an award, a reward that they can meet with ski. You know. To, for the ten minute segment, and they're excited mm-hmm. about that, so they're doing their home because some not everybody can work at home, you know. Mm-hmm. Some of the kids they need that social um, interaction, you know. You have some kids yeah. that are like introverts, and you get your extroverts, you know. They they're gonna be struggling. Some of them, them extroverts, <laughs> they gonna be struggling. Well, some, some of them, some of them got their prayers answered because now they don't have to worry about people beating up on them and yeah, and on. yeah, the bullies, yeah, the bullies. Having issues right now yeah. with themselves. That's why I'm like, why are they why are they fighting that those masks for the kids? That mask might be keeping your child from getting cracked on. Yeah, because there's a lot of kids that have like respiratory issues. You know, I remember mm-hmm. my son was playing little league football. Man, it was a lot of times the the, the 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 top players on the team had asthma. They couldn't finish a game. <laughs> Where mm-hmm. to go to the second string? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um yeah so you know so and I remember too you know because I I I I actually um chart. Mm, charted. I actually was a, uh, I forgot the word, my position, counsel. Yeah, I was uh, actually had my own Taekwondo program and I had like yeah. 60 kids enrolled at one time. You know, wow. so. I'm, you know, I have a black belt in Taekwondo. Do you? All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my daughter was very close to getting her black belt. She was about to test for because she was going to go into, you know, junior competition for the Olympics mm-hmm. and, um, you know, because she had to travel overseas and my mm-hmm. wife's like, uh, I don't know if I want her to go to the school around here. She she need to go to um she need to get to a magnet school for dance. So I'm sending her to boot camp for dance. So she spent that whole summer learning how to dance, and she missed the testing to get her black belt. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah, we never oh, went no. back because you know it's a long process. You remember that long process of getting your black belt? No, I had an uncle who was a sensei and had uh he gave me an honorary. Oh, okay, he hooked you up. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, she had to get to the real way, so it was kind of tough to do <laughs> she both. Did the work. Yeah, she, did she the work. <laughs> but she but she put a lot of work in just to get the full black stripes on her red belt. So she's pretty she's pretty much equivalent to a black belt when it comes to competition. It's just that you know they want you to do all the other things like flying the air and break boards. You got brick bricks. You got to fight mm-hmm. five people, which she's always been able to hold herself in the ring. You know, nice. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that with her. My son was doing football and she was doing taekwondo. Yeah. Oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's and, awesome. but she well, did. You know, she knows how to defend herself. Yeah, if ever yeah, she yeah so absolutely. And she did, and she yeah. did make it to um, 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 dance the the, the dance magnet program. Even though she was most more of a singer, she did get mm-hmm. into the school for dance. It was incredible, and and did mm. her um three years at a um what do you go school of arts? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So she's just very well rounded and like a lady, and she can. Hold her on and yeah. can't be bullied. I love it. That's right. Got her own, got her, help daddy out, got her own TV show. She helped me with the music videos. She does you all the puppetry. Yep. Okay. Help me with the puppets. Yeah, very proud of her. She's actually in her senior year, um, about to come out. Um, yep, soon, real soon. I, I have to book her on my podcast. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't, haven't, haven't gotten her on anybody's shows, but Paula, she helped, she did one mm-hmm. of Paula's first five shows. Uh, when mm-hmm. she was, when she was, when we had the set, you know, the set here in, uh, in um, Baltimore. So uh, it was last time she did an interview, and that was about it had to have been four years ago. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow. Yep. So maybe when she graduates, she'd be able to share her journey. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. But well, we appreciate you, Lady J, yes, for spending time with the Batman and uh, our, our audience. Talk to the Batman about yeah. all my. All my albums. Yep. That's right. Get it, y'all. <laughs> Officially, Lady J. Get it. Out there is on Spotify, iHeart, all the digital platforms you could think of. Who will you subscribe to, right? Pick one. Yeah, wherever you Apple subscribe. Apple Podcasts, right. Pick one. If you can't find one, 
Google it. They'll That's list right. them all. That's right. Google her, Barbara. <laughs> Google her. That's right. Lady of... <laughs> Google me. That's right. Google me. All right. Well, we appreciate right. you in this. We appreciate our audience. We appreciate everybody for tuning in and sharing the yeah. file. If you missed any portion of the show, you better catch it. Uh, again, Kelly Holland did not make this show. I know you guys miss hearing Kelly because Kelly liked to laugh. But you can catch Kelly on the Kelly Holland Show on DeKalb25.com every Thursday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in Atlanta. Take care, everybody. And thanks for tuning in. See you, Lady Bye. J. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. <laughs> Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Double X. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate you guys. Don't forget, y'all, you can catch us every Monday and Thursday at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. That's right, p.m. with Kimmy Kim on Mondays and Kelly Holland on Thursday. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget, all of our broadcasts start off live at 8 o'clock Monday through Thursday. But you can catch the Mr. and Mrs. Devil Slayer at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday right here. Positive power with double X high Christian media. Amen. Take care, everybody. And have a super, super week. This is Dr. Eric Holmes. Third John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospered. I am a multi-award winning and best-selling book author. And you can find my books on all digital outlets. And you're listening to Positive Power XXI Original Podcast. Can you feel the power? <laughs>
everyone, it's Sky, TV host of Music Video Profiles Top 10 Countdown, and you're listening to the new release of Nathan Bartel's Every Step of the Way on Positive Power 21 Christian Media. Hello, my name is Pastor Nathan Bartel, and I've been on this Christian journey for a long, long time, and I just want to tell you my testimony today, if you allow me. been traveling this road so long, sometimes feeling I can't go on. God has been there, every step. he's been there, every step of the way, yes, up your journey I've had to climb, even with pain and heartache Oh, my life. See where he brought me from. Oh, my life. 